Yo, what is going on everyone in the XRP community? Hope you guys are having yourselves a fantastic day today as usual. Make sure you smash that like button down below. Look at what is starting to happen on the XRP weekly chart. The three bar play is beginning to commence. The third bar is forming with still five days, four hours left on the candle. I'm just telling you guys, this is the forecast here. I'm not saying it's going to happen in just one candle, but I'm very very sure in one candle it can at least at least get one of these going and then the following weekly candle will be the glorious like one dollar xrp guys it's looking absolutely fantastic we have double bottomed at a crucial historical four-year level on xrp old all-time high old bear market support old bear market resistance old resistance that we broke to to reach two dollars a coin this level has now been conquered i do believe this is the true launch pad so it seems the whole crypto market is up a couple of percentage points today. You got Bitcoin up 4%, ETH up 5%, XRP up 3%, Cardano 2%, Solana 3.5%. So everything in the top 10 is pretty much up a couple of percentage points on the day. Uh, nothing too fantastic, but much better than crashing 50% down on the day. You got the cryptocurrency market cap creeping up to a trillion. Not looking bad, guys. And we do got some updates from the ripple versus sec lawsuit it's a juicy one guys it's the sec just pretty much admitting that anything that ripple does in the ripple versus sec lawsuit the sec always responds with <laughs> oh no this makes us look stupid no 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 you can't do this you can't do this like that's basically every time the sec is objecting to ripple it's the it's the sec saying that hey we don't like what you're doing because this is making us look dumb this is making our case look stupid Anyways, guys, let's get into some quick little micro charts in XRP and then get into the news of today. Oh my god, the daily chart is looking spicy, bro. It's looking spicy. You get this whole, you know, from 32 cents to 55, 56, like 71%. And then you have like the, okay, the retrace, it's got to come in. You, you got to pull back. You got to, you know, find ground at a little higher level, build some support at higher levels to let the price keep carrying forward. You can't have the price just only go straight up. That's going to make people uncomfortable, and it's just that's not the way markets work, right? When you boom straight up like this, you got to take the inevitable retrace, kind of find some support up here, and then go for a re-break attempt. And now, on the daily chart, XRP is breaking this daily resistance right here. Guys, I'm telling you, that dollar per XRP might literally happen this month. And there is the four hour chart for a little bit more perspective. So here it is, guys. Breaking the SEC opposes the iRemit and Tapjet's motion to file an amicus briefs, stating, quote, these briefs make our case look really stupid, and we aren't going to stand for that. All right, just a little satire, but here's the real information. Uh, the SEC opposes the iRemit and Tapjet's motions uh, to file amicus briefs, claiming the proposed briefs are improper attempts to offer evidence outside the constraints of discovery restrictions, the rules of evidence, and this court's prior order. <clears throat> you know what? You know what's kind of funny about that, though. You know what's kind of funny about that? Um, that Ripple is kind of bringing in partners to back them up. Do you know? The utter hypocrisy of the opposition here. There was a time um, in early 2020, I was still in my, like, living in my first apartment. <clears throat> and what happened was the SEC got caught red-handed in the court of law, reaching out to Ripple's overseas customers, trying to get information from them to help them in the case. But now... Oh no, but now Ripple is contacting their own customers, asking them to file amicus briefs to kind of support them in the case, explain how they use XRP for ODL, but the SEC opposes that. The utter hypocrisy of this agency is mind-blowing. It's mind-blowing. You have the SEC reach out to their customers to try to get information. They, got, they get caught red-handed in court and the judge orders them to stop doing that because they're outside of the U.S., None of, no business with the SEC. Then, Ripple brings in their own customers to help them, and SEC goes, <laughs> no, you can't do that. Who are these guys? I feel like we're in a lawsuit with like a 15-year-old child or something. Ridiculous. Jeremy Hogan says, the SEC objects to the amicus brief as they contain facts outside of the discovery evidence and which it hasn't been able to investigate. As a litigator, I feel its pain. 
Uh, a tenet of law is the right to cross-examine a witness, right? And these briefs do sneak new facts in. The counter-argument is that there should be some leeway because the judge can give the amici evidence... Amici? Amici? Amici evidence uh, less weight than normal evidence when weighing the facts. And finally, does it really matter when the SEC provides the judge such a nice summary of the amici's position? This is what the SEC said right here. Look, check this out. So without any evidentiary support, movements propose offering through their briefs factual evidence on their purported use of XRP. For example, IRA purports to offer living proof that countless similar companies use XRP for cross-border fund transfer on a daily basis. Yeah, in 23 countries, by the way. And claims that it does not use XRP to speculate on it, nor does it consider XRP to be an investment whose inherent value is expected to increase over time. <clears throat> Tapjet's claims... That if TapJets loses its ability to accept XRP as a fiat currency substitute, TapJets will lose significant income, including, but not limited to, investment in technology developed uh, to accept XRP as a form of instant payment for flights, uh, significant business growth opportunities, as well as goodwill. Because movements do not support their briefs without any evidence, the SEC would be prejudiced by being able to, if, by being unable to evaluate the factual uh, veracity, 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 uh, of their claims to, or show that movements' facts are disputed. So, um, yeah, <laughs> does it really matter when the SEC provides the judge a nice summary of the amateur brief position? Oh my God, dude, that is freaking hilarious, man. That is hilarious. Okay. Coming from Stephen Huber, Stephen Huber. All right. Bingo. For the first time since the lawsuit, Ripple, ODL, and XRP appeared in an SEC filing. In infinite accus uh, acquisitions filing from Thursday last week, the company shows the SEC how Trangle entered into a strategic partnership with Ripple to use ODL and XRP for cross-border payments. Strategic partnership with Ripple. In 2021, Ripple, the leading provider of enterprise blockchain and cryptocurrency solutions for cross-border payments, acquired 40% of Trangle. This was done to scale Ripple Net Ripple's global financial network and tackle the complexities of the payment landscape in Southeast Asia and beyond. RippleNet leverages distributed ledger technology to deliver financial solutions from bi-directional messaging, settlement, liquidity management, and lines of credit to a global network of partners. This partnership introduced Ripple's on-demand liquidity service, enabling part participating remittance partners to process instant cross-border payments to eliminate the costly pre-funding arrangement. ODO leverages the digital asset XRP to facilitate low-cost transactions via RippleNet. I think through this whole case, you're going to turn the judge into a freaking XRP holder. I swear to God, dude. So, Trangle has enabled ODL on all its payment corridors since March 2022. This followed the success of Trangle's pilot ODL deployment in September 2021 with 250,000 transactions worth 48 million processed in the first 100 days. A key advantage of this partnership is that remittance businesses gain access not only to markets available via RippleNet, but also Tranglo. Very, very interesting stuff. Last little commentary here from Rath Economist. An interesting note in today's SEC filing. Does this limit the discussion to the defendant's XRP only? And if so, does it affirm a clear secondary market or impun every XRP that Ripple has sold? Blow this up here. Uh, finally, movements offer no support for their purported primary justification for advocating defendant's position. Movements believe that a win for the SEC would harm their businesses due to their purported use of XRP. Indeed, movements do not and cannot explain how defendants being required to register their XRP distributions, the outcome the SEC is seeking to enforce, would prevent movements from using XRP or otherwise impact the movements' businesses. Accordingly, the SEC respectfully requests that the court deny movements' motions for leave to file their proposed briefs. Yes. Um, hey, us SEC, we're going to talk to Ripple Partners, uh, but no, 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 Ripple Partners, we don't want you guys talking in the court case. That's all I can hear right now. <clears throat> and so what does that mean? The SEC claims here their goal has been to get defendants to register their XRP sales as security. I'm wondering if it's a tell they are not trying to declare XRP as security when sold per se. Only when Ripple and founders did it, perhaps there is nothing to be in inferred at all, though. There you guys have it. SEC, man. The, the hypocrisy and the corruption both run very deep. All right, guys, make sure to smash the likes and subscribe down below. Leave an obligatory support of comment. Let me know what you thought about today's video. And make sure right now I'm actually streaming on the channel. So make sure 
tune into the live stream. We're going to be watching this XRP pump, having some discussions about the macro charts. And I'll see you guys in the next one.